Hi everyone. In 2021, Ipswo reached a fantastic milestone, our 30th anniversary. To mark the occasion, we were honoured to hold a small online workshop earlier in the year, where we invited members of the Prada Willi community to share their experiences and opinions and to help us plan for the next 30 years of Ipswo. So Tony and I are here today to share some of the insights that came out of this workshop. We asked those present to help us answer a number of questions. So let's jump right in with the first one. We started the session by asking, what do you consider the most important advances in PWS over the last 30 years? Our audience agreed it was a short list of very important successes. At the top, uh, we had growth hormone and the use of growth hormone, and then early diagnosis, and we recognized how important that was the fact that more research was certainly being done into Prader-Willi syndrome now than in the past, that people with Prader-Willi syndrome had an improved and better lifespan, and there was probably in many parts of the world less stigma, and many families were also connected to other families, and this was seen as very important. We also asked, what were the top developments you would most like to see for people with prader willi syndrome and their families globally in the next 30 years? There was agreement that in the next 30 years, we'd like to see increased awareness of PWS among all health professionals, as well as families, more training about PWS as part of medical education and for social care providers and educators, standards of care for both medical and social care providers, treatment for hypophagia, treatment for and better understanding of behavior and mental health challenges, early diagnosis and growth hormone therapy to be available to everyone free of charge, more residential options and improved transition for adults to residential services and more adult clinics, less reliance by people with Prader-Willi syndrome on their parents, better use of new technologies, and more collaboration between PWS associations and the pharmaceutical industry. So next, we focused on questions around research. What do you consider the top priorities for research in the next 30 years? Here there was discussion about uh, early diagnosis and newborn screening and potentially prenatal diagnosis and the complexities of that. Also understanding more about how the genotype, the genetics of Prader-Willi syndrome leads to the phenotype, the characteristics of uh, Prader-Willi syndrome. People wanted to see a more objective measurement tool for the hyperphagia, and this would be important for clinical trials. Also, how behavior evolves over the lifespan and changes over the lifespan. Understanding more about cognitive impairment and why it differs between individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome. Understanding anxiety and the differences between what some people saw as behavioral acting out and mental illness and understanding the impact of the social, cultural and family context, both on the hyperphagia and behavior, and ultimately how better to integrate people with Prader-Willi syndrome into society. We recognize the importance of clinical trials, for example, of oxytocin or something like vagus nerve stimulation or other approaches such as the use of probiotics or cannabinoid. Studies relating to education, psychological assessment, mindfulness, and motor uh, activities in people with Prader-Willi syndrome were also thought to be important. We also asked, what do you consider the top challenges for research? So consensus gave us this short list. Conducting international trials, recruitment for international trials, obtaining and verifying consent for participation on a global scale, and gaining ethical approval for studies. Tony, could you tell us what delegates answered when we were asked, what do you consider the top priorities in terms of developing and promoting evidence-based practice in the next 30 years? There was really quite a, a, a long list of this. Um, understanding aging in people with Prader-Willi syndrome was thought to be important. What to expect, some of the common or less common comorbidities that might occur with increasing age. But also, understanding the impact of early diagnosis and improved management on the quality of life. 
developing guidelines on the effective management of behavior problems and mental ill health, and finding ways to collect experiences and data from current programs, for example, group homes at schools or training programs. Developing a better understanding of learning style and optimizing educational strategies for people with prader willi syndrome. Understanding the extent to which genetic subtype differences influence treatment and outcome. Understanding more about the comorbidities and how that might lead to adverse outcomes and what to do about them. Developing multi-centered research using standardized questionnaires, either to compare, for example, different living situations or treatment structures, or to see if good findings in one program could be replicated at another site. Quality of life, understanding what people with prader willi syndrome themselves see as important issues. And also, perhaps importantly, try to undertake an audit of current practices around the world and to use understanding from research ultimately to promote person-centered support. Our final research-focused question was, what do you consider the top challenges in terms of developing and promoting evidence-based practice? There was a general consensus that this would be difficult for many reasons. Uh, there's little evidence and few experts in the field. The complexity of the disorder makes it difficult to draw researcher and clinicians into the field. There are cultural differences. There are vastly different types of services available in different parts of the world. Some care providers don't encourage their clients to engage in research, and substantial funding is needed for high quality research. Our final few workshop questions were on the global PWS community. So what did participants say when asked, what are our responsibilities to underserved families and communities within our own countries and around the world? People's response to this was that firstly, we all had a responsibility to offer help, but need to accept that not everyone will necessarily want it, but we needed to be there and offer it. Importantly, we need to ensure that more doctors recognize prader willi syndrome, and we should aim to ensure access to early diagnosis and a platform to access early support wherever you live in the world. We also asked, what do you consider the top challenges facing the international prader willi syndrome community in the next 30 years? And people answered funding, which is certainly always a challenge and that they'd like to see us moving from a model of parents, medical professionals, and service providers advocating and speaking for people with PWS to one that empowers individuals with PWS to advocate and speak on their own behalf and to speak through us. And also understanding political and cultural differences around the world. So to end on a high note, the final question we'll reflect on is this. What do you consider the top strengths of the international PWS community? Most strikingly, we felt there had been a consistent involvement of both professionals, care providers and parents in Ipswo since the start of the organisation. More people are getting a diagnosis. The, the work of Ipswo was clearly international in nature and there was increasing solidarity between countries and that Ipswo brought families and professionals together in a very positive way. And that was a summary of what our workshop audience said. Shelley, did you have any final reflections on the workshop yourself? Well, as someone who only started working with Ipswo at the start of its 30th year, it was really a joy to put faces to the names of so many people who I've been working with in the PWS community over the year. And as we start to facilitate more meetings online, I'm really looking forward to helping connect more people globally and also addressing barriers such as languages, cultural differences, and time zones as much as we're able. So I really enjoyed it. What about yourself, Tony? Well, it, interesting, Shelley, because I've been involved in Ipswo since, since it was first founded. And it was really a, a privilege to reflect on how, how much we had moved forward over the last 30 years, and I think there have been great advances. But I guess also I felt there was so much more to do, both in terms of our understanding of, of Prader-Willi syndrome and trying to develop new, new treatments, 
but also that there were and are big differences across the world and there's still much for IPSWO to do to try and reduce those differences and bring improvements to people with Prader-Willi syndrome and their families wherever they live in the world. But it was really a special occasion and I, I certainly enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Great. Oh, thank you, Tony. So I think that just leaves it to me to say thank you to our sponsor, Novo Nordisk, who made this workshop possible. And thank you to everyone who attended and especially to everyone who has made the last 30 years possible. Well, we're very much looking forward to embarking on the next 30 years of Ipswich. It, it was brilliant. Just amazingly helpful. Outstanding conference. We are so numerous, so much expertise. So invested and passionate. And the strength of Ipswich and the strength of our community is the diversity that we bring to the table.